long-awaited and sometimes dreaded first real Mauritanian stage is upon us. It's a big one and is 80% untracked. The teams were, however, looking forward to tackling what is often the most eagerly anticipated part of the Africa Eco Race, the Dunes of Mauritania. An exciting and challenging mixture of navigation and driving skills, over 478 kilometers of time stage between Shami and Edzidin. More bad news for Alexandre Deban as he ran into trouble again today. Leader in the category for a short while last week, he hardly got to even enjoy it. Lost in Morocco and broken down in Mauritania. And the dark days continue. We broke a wishbone. We've driven 100 kilometers like this and it's annoying. Every time we're in front, we're driving well, we end up with a problem. It was a difficult day and pending ratification by the race stewards in all categories, we find in third place in the SSV category, Benoit Fretin, still sitting at the top of the leaderboard. Second place for Fabrice Etienne, also of Team Ideo, proving every day how reliable these machines can be. Terrific Tuesday for Geoffroy Noël de Burlin. He brought home the SSV win today, despite having lost some time towing a fellow competitor out of a dune. Another example of the spirit of this race, the paraplegic Belgian driver wins his first stage. I'm surprised because this morning it was hard driving. I was overtaken by lots of cars. In the second half it was really great because of the small dunes. I saw one or two stuck. I saw a friend broken down a kilometre from the refuelling. I towed him in. Today we all finished on fumes, but honestly it was a beautiful stage. At the beginning very rolling, but afterwards we mixed it up and it all changed. It was an excellent start to the real Mauritania. I'm happy to be here. Pending ratification, the results are as follows. Victory for Geoffroy Noël de Burlin ahead of Patrice Etienne and Benoît Fretin. Fifth place for Philippe Champigny. In the GC, Benoit Fretin still leads with more than two hours from Patrice Etienne. Geoffroy Noël de Burlin is eight minutes behind in third place. day to forget for Marcelina Zawadzka. The former Miss Poland broke her clutch and after a four-hour stop to fix it, she arrived home very late. This morning, he started way back after yesterday's mechanical that saw him towed home by a fellow competitor. Today, Yves Fromont was back in the game and the lawyer from Lyon came home in fourth place. Six minutes behind Miklos Kovac, the Hungarian driver drove fast. He even managed to advance his third place in the GC. On the finish line, the winner from 2010 was already smiling. He found all the waypoints where others had struggled. They didn't go to find the waypoint. They could have followed us to it, and if they had, they would have got it. They wouldn't have lost the time that they will lose now. He decided to keep going and not get to the waypoint. 
He chose the best routes through the soft dunes. Patrick Martin is back on the podium today, coming second in the stage. It was a real Mauritanian stage with everything you expect. Fast, sandy tracks, big rows of dunes, camel grass, something for everyone. It was pretty hard because the sand was soft, it was complicated, so we played with the trucks, back and forth between us. It was a great stage. Victory goes today to Igor Bowens. The Belgian driver reported a navigation error, took a big hit to the front of his truck and lost 10 minutes. But despite this, he takes his fourth stage win after a very demanding day in the dunes. Results for the category pending validation from the race stewards are as follows. Bowens wins from Martin and Kovac. A great sixth place for Francis Lapp. In the GC, Bowens has a 7 minute 11 second lead over Martin and 18.40 from Kovac. Five trucks in the top six. Unheard of. When I'm on my bike, I feel free. On board his KTM, Nicola Duto, number 128, forgets it all, especially his paralysis and his wheelchair. Nothing can stop the 50-year-old Italian, not the sand, not the dunes, and certainly not the accident he had in March 2010. He's here on the Africa Eco Race on a specially modified motorbike. An example of courage, determination, and strength of will. I've never felt like an example to others. I just had a setback in my career. And now I'm in a wheelchair. It's not a situation I chose for myself. So I could feel sorry for myself. It's a less comfortable situation before, but once a biker, always a biker. Not returning to the bike wasn't even an option. The last thing I wanted to do was to stop. Leaving the biking world to go to four wheels was not an option either. To get back on the bike was really my choice, particularly to compete again. It's my passion. There I feel equal to able-bodied athletes. If someone finds me inspirational, that's good. Racing is in his DNA and he tackles difficulties exactly as he does the dunes. Nothing scares me, he says, with a disconcerting ease. His motto, never give up. It's sort of my motto. If you do rally raids or any other sport, you mustn't give up. Out there we all suffer the same. Competing, going to the beach, buying an ice cream. It's all difficult, but it's also about gaining experience. We learn every day. The bike taught me to face real obstacles, and I have faced many. I adapted this metaphor to my philosophy in life. What happened to me was fate. I never gave up before this, and I don't see why I would start now. Out on the course, Nicola Duto doesn't hold back. He throws himself into the fight. The desert is his comfort zone. He rides with two ghost riders, as they're known, one in front and one behind. My job is to follow Nicola and help him if he falls. I'm not really in the competition. It's not either easy or hard. If he falls, how he falls, it's complicated. It's difficult because I need to manage my own energy so I can be there and on it in case he falls. The rider who follows me is the one who helps immediately if I fall. He pulls with all his might. If he can't get me up and I'm in an awkward position, the one in front comes back to help. It's quite simple. If one of us has to stop with a problem, we solve it together. We're like the three musketeers. 
All for one and one for all. In the second Mauritanian stage, Nicola Duto came in in 53rd place. Hats off to Mamadou Boukoum. The Senegalese rider is in the Motul Extreme Rider Camp and finished today in 20th place, putting him 20th and third Motul Extreme Rider in the GC. A nod to this driver who came from very far from here. Ashish Raran from India is a naval engineer and started riding five years ago. He was 31st today. Far, far from the leaders, Paul Anders Ullevalsitter and Alessandro Baturi decided to hold back yesterday so as to not have to lead out. A wise decision. Leaving 15th, the Norwegian arrived exhausted in third place after a very long day. It was uh, mo one of the longest day ever. Maybe because I'm getting old, but uh, I'm very tired now. We, uh, <laughs> we was so lost. We was far away for maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, I don't know, but... Ah, and then we had uh, not... On the limit with the fuel for some bikes, I think, when after we've been lost for so long. And uh, it was a very hard day, and in the... From kilometers 300 to 400, which uh, was very physical, with the camel grass, soft, small dunes... <laughs> but uh, it's nice to be here now. Similar thoughts from Alessandro Baturi at the finish line. He rode much of the day with Ulla Valsiter. Setting off in 20th place, he finished in second, riding past many others with the Norwegian. The first part of the stage was very difficult. I was with Paul and other riders. We lost 30 to 40 minutes and then we found the waypoint and we set off. Well done to Griti and Luci. Indeed, a huge bravo to Paolo Lucci. After his third played yesterday, he won on board his Husqvarna in a time of 6 hours 14 minutes. Once again, pending ratification by the race stewards, here are the results. First stage victory for Lucci ahead of Boturi and Ola Valsiter. Norbert Dubois is first Frenchman in 14th place. In the GC, Boturi is still in the lead, but Ulla Valsiter is only 4 minutes 6 seconds behind him. Paolo Lucci gains two places to go into third. That's all for today. Tomorrow sees Stage 8 taking the team's 430 kilometres from Eidzidin to Tijigja. But as always, before we say goodbye, here are some of Stage 7's best bits. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.